we have talked before many, 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 many times about what the consequences of Donald Trump winning the White House might mean. And when you look at all the polls, you know, <laughs> there are a lot of them out there that do not look good for Harris. Like, legitimately, they do not look good for Harris. However, when you dig deeper into them, when you look at a lot of other explanations to them, uh, Harris is in a better situation than a lot of us, uh, at least than the polls might seem to paint her in, shall we say. So I do have a lot of hope, of course, that Harris is going to win uh, the US election. However, there is... And we must always state it, there always is a chance, an if, shall we say, because I think that's the best way to, to describe it, an if. And if Donald Trump wins the White House immediately, immediately, there are going to be five big problems, five very, very big problems that Starmer is going to have to face almost immediately. And we're going to go through all those five reasons why that is the case, what impact these are going to be, potentially what you know Starmer might do to try and, and ease these things out. How is he going to react? What's he going to do? So we're going to go through some of these five reasons. Like I say, feel free to comment down below. Let me know what you think. Do you agree? Do you disagree? You know, excellent comment on down below. Um, like I say, if you want to help support the channel, click the like, click the share. If you're new, click the subscribe button. And of course, always down below, there is the Patreon page. There's the Buy Me Coffee link. There's the YouTube thank you button. And of course, there's the Pony Club down below as well. So thank you very much to all those people who do help and support the channel that way. And let's crack on into today's video. So first things first, and I think the first major problem, the first major problem Starmer is going to have to face with a Trump White House, tariffs. You know, Trump uh, Trump was at the, uh, the Chicago uh, business conference a couple of days ago, and he constantly, constantly reiterated you know, just how much he loves tariffs. Like Trump said, it's the best word in the English dictionary, tariffs. Now, if you remember the last time Trump was in office, Trump said, or at least Trump decided, he was going to put uh, tariffs on any steel coming into the UK because this was going to help the UK, well, the US uh, steel manufacturing. And that had a massive negative in impact on the UK for its steel air exports. So instantly, that hurt us quite significantly. Not only that, but Trump seems to be in, in the um, impression that if he puts these tariffs, no other country would dare do that back to America. But what happened if you what happened if you remember that what happened in that case the european union responded with its own tariffs and that hurt american exports of of us steel <laughs> so those tariffs i believe um were actually gotten rid of um rid of by Biden, but I think the EU kept them, or at least I think they load them on which they kept them. I can't remember exactly now. Um on and potentially you're looking at Trump going, well, I think 10% tariff on everything across the board. So ultimately this is gonna hurt massively, massively the the, the UK. And once again, we turn to the Brexiteers who were begging Trump, begging Trump to give them this absolute sweetheart deal. Because once again, to quote Daniel Hanan, we would get such an amazing deal from Donald Trump.
that it would make remaining in the single market and customs union seem ridiculous. What that deal might look like, what exactly that deal was, they never expanded upon. Just that, oh my word, if Trump's in the White House, we get this amazing, fantastical deal. What that deal is, we don't know. But if you have Trump and the way that he's been acting, especially in this, with his really, really protectionist stance, overly protectionist, I, I would say, uh, with with trade deals, why is America? Why is the UK going to get a really good comprehensive trade deal with America? Let alone the um, um, absolutely amazing gold standard one that the Brexiteers claim that we would get. That ain't gonna happen. So that's that's one at least problem. Starmer is gonna have to definitely, definitely try and solve. So number two, number two is the Israeli Gaza war. Uh, I've said this before. Right now, at this moment in time, Netanyahu is taking full advantage, full advantage, knowing full well that you know. Biden's a lame duck. He can't really do anything at this stage. It's traditional for US presidents during like this, this literally like the last sort of month and a half, not to really do anything, not to really rock the boat. And of course, when have we seen the most escalation in this? Well, it's been really within the last month and a half with Israel really pushing into Lebanon. Even, you know, quote, accidentally, in air quotes, uh, attacking UN peacekeepers. So if Donald Trump comes into the White House, Donald Trump's not going to care. You know, he's not going to give a damn. He will just give Netanyahu a absolute free pass. And if you think you've seen Israel be bad now, wait until you see Donald Trump giving them a free pass. The war and escalation in the Middle East will only get worse. Only get considerably worse. And then how does Starmer do this? Well, we've already seen them ban, you know, certain weapon licenses, which is, again, good start. Maybe you just go all the way and just ban the rest of the weapons. I think that will probably be the the best way to go about it if this if this sort of comes to pass. We've already seen the sanctioning now of uh, of of settlers. That is having a an impact. So maybe the UK government will then go further on on sort of targeted sanctions. Potentially a way to go. And then of course, how does Donald Trump react about this? Well, <laughs> we don't know. But make no mistake, um, Trump is only going to make this conflict a thousand times worse. A thousand times worse. Because he will be an act like an absolute bull in a china shop when it comes to this. And if you think things are bad now, wait until how Netanyahu acts with Trump giving him an absolute free pass. So, on to point number three. Um, point number three definitely is something that I would say is going to be a significant problem. That is, of course, uh, Nigel Farage. Now, why is Nigel Farage point number three? Well, this leans into a potential scenario because, obviously, there's meant to be this relationship between, you know, Trump and Farage. And how good that relationship is... Well, it's questionable. But, but, with Trump in the White House, and maybe Nigel begging Trump to, to come and see him, to come and, you know, pay Clacton a visit, and the fact that you've now got Trump angry, uh, you know, accusing the Labour Party of election interference, would he then decide, well, I'm going to go 
visit the UK, but I'm not even going to meet with Keir Starmer. I'm just going to completely ignore him and just head straight for Clacton, visit Clacton, and then leave. Because I'm not going to lie, that would be a huge economic, a huge diplomatic snub. That would be a massive diplomatic snub on a lot of levels. And for a lot of the conservatives who like talk about the Atlantic Bridge, this you know friendship that's that lasts between you know America and the UK. I I think you would at that point have a lot of those types saying that at that point the bridge has truly fallen down. It has crumbled. Because if he came, visited that, well, massive diplomatic stuff. Not to say also there would be a massive, you know, massive rise and boost to the alt right, not only just here in uh, in the UK, but you know, around the world, throughout Europe, it would absolutely be a massive emboldenment of them. I think that's absolutely a certainty as well. But. Trump would only aid and sort of embed some of those things, and especially something like that. Yeah, that would be that would be a massive problem. That would be a very significant diplomatic snub, which would then cause other tensions. Because point four is, of course, Ukraine. We've talked about this numerous times on here on Geoscope on Politics Social. Trump has said, reiterated. I don't know, countless times that once he is in, this war is over in an hour. How it's over in an hour, we don't know. But there has been constant speculation that what Trump would do, uh, again, because the, the Republicans keep on saying, well, no, you don't understand, just cut off um, you know, the supply of, of support from, from us to, to Ukraine, this war ends. Not in, of course, Ukraine's favor. So this would be a massive, massive, probably throwing Ukraine under the bus. And it wouldn't be the first time that Donald Trump has done this. He threw a lot of US allies under the bus last time. And it is very likely in another Trump presidency, you would see numerous uh, again, U.S. allies thrown under the bus. There was a good reason why one of the first things Biden said when he won back in 2020 that oh, the U.S. is back. The U.S. is back on you know on the political stage. He's is ready to sort of you know rejoin the world in a sensible way because that's how bad Trump had been to U.S. foreign policy and, and relations. It had been an absolute disaster. But if if this happens, well, I've said it again, we have to step up. Not only us, but the rest of Europe really have to step up um, in sort of how we can help and support, support Ukraine. Because this brings us to our final point, NATO. Because there's something else that Donald Trump loves to talk about, and we don't know how he might react to, to NATO, well... Yeah, how how then do you hold the NATO alliance together with someone like Donald Trump in charge of America, who pretty much all the NATO countries would rely on, with someone being incredibly unreliable in the White House? You know, we've laid out the scenario before of what would happen if Putin rang up Trump and said, oh, you know, hi, buddy. Um, yeah, this village in Latvia, that's really rightfully Russia. So don't worry about it. I'm I'm just gonna go and, and, and take it. Cause it's you know, it's it's rightfully ours. And what if he goes and takes a border town, a border village, and just goes, that's ours now. Meanwhile. Estonia, or again, any of these countries will go Article 5. Would then Trump join in?
No, I don't think he would, which again, go back to stuff Joe Biden has said of, you know, every inch of NATO territory will be protected. W would Trump say that? I don't think so. I do not think so at all. So this would be another big challenge that Starmer would have to face in the White House. Now, um, right through, as we said here, tariffs, Israeli Gaza war, uh, probably a huge, massive diplomatic snub uh, by Donald Trump destroying the Atlantic Bridge uh, and the I, any idea of that potentially between sort of UK, US, U, UK, US relations um, for obviously throwing Ukraine absolutely under the bus and then five uh, NATO and just what would happen there. Just those five points alone are terrifying to think about what Trump might do and how we would have to react as as the UK, not only just, just us, but, you know, gathering other allies around probably the rest of, of Europe and the world to maybe try and push back against some of these things and how we would deal with, with some of this stuff. But yeah, it is terrifying to think about. And I can guarantee there are other people going, oh, well, 0.6, uh, 0.7 uh, down below, because there are more, way more than, than just those, you know, in the ether of potential stuff that could happen. But yeah, I think those, uh, those would absolutely be my biggest five points, you know, right there and there. Easily, easily going to be some of the big points Starmer will have to face. But, as always, hope, you know, he doesn't win. But, hey, it is an if. So, as always, thank you very much for watching. Please do remember to click on the like, share, and subscribe button on your way out. Visit the links down below, of course, as well, if you want to help support the channel. And, of course, we'll see you all next time.